And so, in the reign of Queen George the Seventh, it came to pass that the Moon Kaiser commissioned the construction of a vast lunar cannon, aimed directly at London. Soon every man, woman, and child strong enough to hold a rifle was conscripted and sent off to fight for Queen and Country. I was serving in the 42nd Starborn Division while Tim was still busy being mortal, like an idiot. I can almost hear the recruiter's ad now. Grab yourself a laser hat and serve your queen with a smile, smile, smile. Light them with your loose of her and burn them clean. Smile, boys, that's the style. Come on a grand adventure. Give the Kaiser a damn good thrashing. Lenny won't know what hit him. <laughs> so join the Starborn Infantry and serve your country. Of course, when Tim arrived, alongside his best friend, Bertie. It was a very different story indeed. The surface of the moon had been deserted for centuries, so all the fighting took place in the vast caverns and tunnels that riddled it. It was muddy, it was dusty, it was cold, and most of the time it was pitch dark, aside from muzzle flashes, or your comrades catching fire as the invisible beam of heat swept through no man's land. Aside from that, you always had to keep one ear open for the alarms. If it was a gas attack, you could usually get to a respirator in time, or maybe even trust the pumps to take care of it. But if it was a microwave attack, you had to get to one of your foxholes and cover yourself in lead, or you'd be cooked from the inside out. I was having a great time, but Tim and Bertie found their own ways to deal with it. Gas last night, and gas the night before. Gonna be gas tonight, if we never gas no more. When, when you're, you're gassed, gassed, you're sick as you can be. Cause an overchock and mustard gas are much too much for me. They're choking us, they're choking us. One respirator and it broke on us. Thank your lucky stars that the pumps still work Cause coughing up your lungs can be a chore Cook last night and cook the night before Gonna be cooked tonight if we're never cooked no more When you're cooked, you're hot as you can be Cause the Kaiser wants to microwave the British infantry They're boiling us, they're boiling us one lead sheet between the four of us Thank your lucky stars that you taste so good Cause you wouldn't want your corpse to go to waste But I was not the only mechanism involved in the fighting. The toy soldier had enlisted alongside me, claiming that it would be jolly good fun. And indeed for the first few months fought valiantly by my side, but it was then we discovered something interesting about it. It would obey any order given to the letter, but it didn't necessarily matter which uniform the person giving the order wore. It disappeared after a few months, only to be captured later by our side, wearing the uniform of a corporal. Then later, the colonel giving us our orders had a rather familiar moustache. I even heard it made field marshal for the other side once. Still... It seemed happy enough, after its fashion.
continued like this for three or four years, grim and desperate tunnel warfare, until Tim's best friend Bertie did what young men at war are prone to do, and died. The details are muddy, pointless, and quite frankly hilarious. But what's interesting is the effect it had on Tim. We'll murder all the, the men with fury have been sent to the carpet, many spells with their hands have been spent. They tried to shake a firm result, but haven't made a dent, and the blood will run like wine. Take the prisoners, give no quarter, show them all the colour of their etchers on the floor. But the guys have made a candle to the slaughter, and the blood will run like wine. We'll suck the ragged rifles and the suckers of their skulls, and existence is a bad disease that needs to be a cut. Press our bayonets will stop and the blood will run like wine. Take the prisoners in no quarter. Show them all the colour of their entrance on the floor. The guys in their hands to the slaughter and the blood will run like wine. All together now. Take the prisoners in no quarter. Show them all the colour of their entrance on the floor. The guys in their hands to the slaughter and the blood will run like wine. So Gunpowder Tim cuts a bloody red path Through cannon and through infantry, dealing out his wrath Battalions were gathered and charged with his destruction But all of them fell to his maddened corruption Such violence can't last though, and Tim's luck ran dry When Eleni lined a rifle up and let the lead fly And when he awoke, he was chilled to the bone Kneeling unarmed at the Moon Kaiser's throne And the Kaiser just smiled with his crown all askew Saying, well now my friend, it's a pleasure to meet you It seems you've made a habit of hacking up my boy So I'll return the favour with all the means I can employ An extended execution by royalty appointed And I warn you, the last one left me very disappointed So the Kaiser opens up a box and shows young Tim my head Fresh severed, but I winked at him, I guess I wasn't dead Seeing there was hope Tim looked around the room The toy soldier in uniform with a royal guardsman's plume Accidentally it had joined the Kaiser's personal guard But it still followed any order If you gave it nice and hard Behind the throne the great gun stood aimed right at London town Tim had his plan and he prepared to bring the despots down With the lunar cannon loaded and his fuse prepared to light Tim looked the soldier in the eye and he gave the order Fight! Chaos came through the Kaiser's men The violence quick and mad As the wooden man obeyed the mission briefing that it had severed head and bit the Kaiser on the nose. He screamed in shock and dropped me, so I went after his toes. Confusion ranged him, took his leave and ran towards the gun. He turned the dial so right around a cannon barrel spun. He didn't know the firing codes, it wouldn't stop him long. For the brutal hymn of gunpowder remained his favourite song, and with a barrel from the armoury, he set the fuse alight and fled into the life pod where the Kaiser spent the night. The pod was shielded hard against the force of twenty suns, but Tim couldn't get the visor closed before the fuse was done. So when the lunar cannon fired and blew the moon out of 
of the sky. The piercing brightness of the blast burned out our hero's eyes. And with the force of every weary soldier's tunnel bomb, the explosion ripped the full moon's heart.